Namaste and welcome. I am grateful that you are here today. My name is Neeraj and today we'll be talking about predictions for India as a country for the year 2023. How does that look like and uh, what can we expect in terms of applied astrology series that I've been running for some time. So uh, if you see my screen, um, we, uh, we of course talk about seeking truth, consciousness and applied astrology on this channel before I get started. On the right hand side that you see is the natal chart for India as a country. So it was born like 15th August 1947, 12 a.m. in terms of time. So that's the chart that I've considered and I'll quickly get started. So this time period for India in 2022 has been particularly good from mid of May or let's say 14th, uh, mid of May till uh, uh, towards the end of December. So uh, India has been growing fast uh, in the world stage and there have been a lot of recognition for the diplomacy and international um, discussions and even the role in Ukraine, uh, NATO country that India has played. So you know that part. So uh, the time period has been good, but it doesn't seem so great or really a great time period going forward from here. So I want to give you a quick background before we get started. So I have divided the um, this small presentation or all my 28 predictions into two parts. One will be from the time duration. Uh, the time duration will be from 14th December 2022 to mid of July, 15 July 2023 to be specific. And, um, and, uh, and then from 15 July 2023 to early January 2024, how does that look like for India as a country in terms of astrology or applied astrology, the whole situation or what we can expect as next step. So um, I just quickly covered the point one and two as you see. Uh, so time period has been good, but it changes after 15th of December 2022 very specifically. Um, the third point here being India is of course all prepared and set to reach greater heights. But there are significant challenges. So if you see, uh, India is on the track record of 100 billion remittances from the global largest diaspora in the world, which is Indians abroad. And this will be sort of a world record that India will be doing. So this is just an example of, um, you know, how this time period from mid of this year has been very good for India. Then the growth has been phenomenal and, and great. And this 100 billion in remittances will be like a world record. For the first time, one country will be getting such a huge amount I guess two to three percent of the GDP of India as a country uh, in terms of remittances from global diaspora. So that's point number three. I'll move on to the next point quickly. Number four is of course the leadership is all set. They want to be focused. They want to become profitable and it looks like from the charts that they will be taking very bold steps uh, to to boost income or profitability of the, com of the country in general. Uh, there is specific focus on the stock markets, the performance of the businesses, the lending that happens in the country. Uh, we can also expect certain gains or income from uh, sources that we would have not expected in past. Um, so let's say for instance, I know for sure right now the uh, oil that India is buying from Russia at cheaper prices is actually benefiting private, private businesses. So it's going to help them uh, in, in a way if you look at it. So um, there can be certain gains or economic boost in the overall activity of the country. That's number four. Then number five is the leadership efforts uh, are towards the market and it is tend to, it looks like it will go positive for gold this year, specifically in this time period, December to 15 July, 2023. You can expect a rise in property prices, uh, boost in rental, rental income. Uh, we are seeing some trend, for instance, in Bangalore, I just heard 20 to 30 percent because people are kind of going back to offices and uh, so there's a 20 to 30 percent rise in some areas in rental property uh, income for instance good for the buyers not so good for the uh, employees or people who are renting out in general so you can boost those kind of uh, you can see those kind of boosts in the economy and growth and the real estate is poised to grow again in this time period the things which are uh, speculative stocks stock market and trade businesses and even the business partnership with other countries will be okay in general. It will be towards the growth. There are some challenges though, which I'll be covering in my subsequent slides. Now let's talk about challenges part. Again, I'm continuing my uh, number of points I'm covering and I also continue some screenshots uh, with just to give you more examples of what I mean by that and how that is happening in real time. So that's why I call it applied astrology. 
So this time period seems very challenging for the education system, particularly Bollywood, anything to do with entertainment industry. Um, India has been trying to bring in NEP or National Education Policy 2020, I guess, and then uh, it seems to be challenged. The children's future in terms of education and the kind of policies that government is going to make for them, for the kids, uh, seems to be challenged in general. There can be, uh, there can be, government can try to bring in birth control measures or some limitation on the number of kids a family can have and so on and so forth. And that may be challenging for the government or uh, India as, as, as a country as a whole. And that can actually go for legal discussions or debates, uh, which actually is not, look it, from the charts or the um, natal chart that we are considering for India's birth, you know, we don't see that being really a beneficial uh, uh, debate or discussion or even step uh, in the long run and also in terms of investments. So that's point number six. Uh, I've just given a screenshot if you see on the right hand top on that line. So uh, it is a little bit in the past and we're in December right now, but there was an attempt uh, teachers body plan mass protest against quote unquote retrograde uh, national education policy. We can also expect the rise of national debt, any expenses and borrowing due to foreign meddling. The chart also shows rise of accidents, sudden rise in diseases. So you can expect, now we're seeing what is happening in China as I speak, the rise of COVID cases, um, the new variant that has come up and the sort of unrest that is going on. There could be a sudden spike in similar situation. Uh, I would not call it similar or that bad to be honest, but the number of cases of COVID that has been declining could suddenly start rising up uh, and sort of um, some other infections which are influenza, common cold, uh, cough and cold, which happens in winters predominantly, more so in northern India, where there is more of smog and all those challenges. Um, conflicts and violence due to ideological differences with foreign powers are possible. And this is, uh, there is a clear indication that this is funded by foreign entities, uh, other powers, which sort of don't want India to grow at this rate. And they don't like India sort of trying to make a um, multipolar, if you will, uh, world order or a world system. Um, everybody wants less competition. So for the developed world or, or any Western world or anybody who doesn't like India, this is the time they're working, but they're working secretly. Uh, it is not well known uh, behind the curtains. I have some more evidence and some more on my predictions on that as I speak. In nine being, there can be rise of religious conflicts uh, via secret foreign involvement, like I said. Now this, this time period is all about religion, law and order in the country, the whole 2023, if you if you will, in, in the sense that in fact the whole, I've given the uh, predictions about the world order or whole world in my previous videos about three years, sort of from now up till next three years. But we can clearly see in the charts that um, the, the 2023 year, if I were to name it in one term, you know, it's, it's more like a ideological differences or uh, sort of a proxy war or indirect war between countries or like cultural war or ideological war or intellectual warfare. That's what is going to happen. And uh, India is of course, uh, is, is, is again having, is have a very sweet spot in the global geopolitics or economics in general. So that is why it is bound to happen in India as a country as well. There is some ray of hope or good news though. For example, the, uh, in this whole challenging time period that I said from December to July 2023. The income sources inside the country such as milk production, the dairy products, um, income from cattle and all of that will maintain a healthy economy, will keep us fed and taken care of. The sense of societal obligations or India's position as a neutral country and sense of dharma if you will and or just being righteousness or being ethical is very strong and uh, well, has been very strong during NATO, Russia, Ukraine conflict, as you all know. Now, now all these decisions which has happened in the past in 2022 so far are going to build a real type of assets for us because of these decisions and the healthy economy and the milk production, etc. That will provide a good image to India uh, as a country on international forums. On the right hand top, I've given just a quote by uh, in the UN that we must continue to believe in the power of diplomacy. I guess from S.J. Shankar uh, in the UN speech somewhere. So the 11th point, quickly moving on to the 11th point, that is the businesses and trade partnerships during this period will bring in average returns for the country 
uh, we don't see a lot of good things or let's say a lot of negative things but it's somewhere in between some trade agreements may be helping india recently had sort of free trade agreement with australia the uk thing is hanging as you know with rishi sunak and the government there in the uk and um, and canada the relationships are challenged as usual so and with us also there is a lot of diplomacy and all that those issues are going on as you all know but it will be sort of midline average sort of a economy or business in this time period the 12th point being and again this specific slide deck is more about legal reforms that are underway or expected we expect that at least in terms of applied astrology coming into india as a country and then there could be big leaf reforms uh, legal reforms like um, uniform civil code nrc caa etc for example i live in canada right now and almost all the countries of developed world has nrc including canada so this could come up in india as well and caa uh, etc there has been protests in the past but it looks like there could be big leaf legal reforms in the country it seems a possibility here and more likely to happen i said in the bracket and this will boost up countries income and wealth this is uh, geared towards increasing profitability and income like i said one of the many bold decisions that we see government or the leadership is is poised to take religious sentiments with respect to law and order it is a time period where every party every part of the world would like would be talking religion like i said it's the era or the decade or let's say the 2023 specifically is the the year of ideological differences or cultural wars so it's a it's all about people will be talking about religion life good deeds but the legal reforms or such big decisions would lead to complete unrest uh, let's say and a lot of disturbance uh, internally within india and there is a time period uh, which more specifically between december 2022 uh, i thought see let's say 13th or 14th december i guess the india time to 14 13 14 15 of july 2023 um there i i do, of course spoke about the positive hopes and things which can be okay or average but this seems very challenging in terms of legal reforms um and people are of course um, on the 13th point people are understanding the unfairness and appeasement politics very well um sort of rahu is in burning a chakra and that kind of exposes everybody and what happens in that time period and is again moved to ketu's position in libra which is in swati nakshatra in other words so technically in simple words it means that rahu is sort of behaving like ketu which is like uh, the exposures will be happening again and again so what happens that in general this is actually good news for india or, or the people of india because things which were under the carpet or hidden somewhere will be exposed so you will have like i call it like a snowball effect so you will have like one revelation the second revelation the third revelation so people will see that the truth will come out one after another Uh, all the red card experts so called like people who are like sort of uh, hiding the truth keeping the truth behind the curtains will actually not understand how this is coming out and like i said in my previous world order prediction as well that this is like a divine intervention it is god running the show or the planets have been ordered by the divine intervention to run and expose truth to the public so there is no way uh, it cannot happen so you will see revelation after revelation after revelation so Uh, but again, I've given a small caveat in the bracket that even Indians living in India uh, may not see that unfairness. But uh, for for abroad or uh, people who are living outside India, it is very apparent. It is coming out like right in media. If you are just paying basic attention, you will know the whole biasness which is going on, uh, how appeasement happens, how uh, there can be sustained efforts to change the demography of the country. so what you see in india is pretty much happening in the west in the european countries as well it's just that in india it's not that prevalent so uh, but internationally you see the strength of those powers against india or some of them are in favor of india you can see the volume that they are working on there's huge money being pulled in but again um, on those lines you can also expect a rise in decolonization if you will and this was again on the right hand side i have given a france paper which is like nationalism in india pm narendra modi on decolonization mission so there is lot of development which is coming up i expect some influence on all the legal reforms on nep uh, for india mm, the education sector for for that matter and uh, the history will be countered opinion like i said this is the time for the truth to come up the whole year actually so um, what will happen is that the history will be challenged 
everything what people have been building, uh, the biased one-sided view will be actually challenged and there'll be pressure on the government or the politicians or the policy makers, even the education system or teachers for that matter to change the narrative. Somebody teaching history in a classroom will have a very good time because it can easily be countered opinion. Just an FYI, uh, FYI for my teachers who, are, who teach history, economics and politics or geopolitics or political science in general. So that's coming up. Number 14 is of course, um, just calling it the unrest or the social disturbance or internal conflicts. So um, the, the, the time, times are challenging, but India's leadership is very courageous, uh, but it is equally challenged by the foreign forces, foreign forces especially causing violence, conflicts in the internal matters of the country. Now, when I say religious convict, uh, conflicts, it could be conversions, um, the funding that comes, and uh, there can be a lot of negativity in the media. This will be a chaotic time for the country. Social media, digital media, internet, and more specifically, all the media houses will actually exaggerate facts because the world is moving towards a head-on collision. India will, the, will be the part of a sweet spot in all this, uh, which is going to come as a world war later, which I also spoke about in my previous videos, if you see my channel. Righteousness, source of awakening or spiritual awakening in India, or and this is a global phenomenon, by the way. So be, like I've been saying in my previous videos as well, that there'll be uh, learning of religion, religious uh, book sales will be all time high. So if you sell books, it is a good time to sell more books, uh, specifically around religion, politics, identity, uh, all of that, those things. But it is in the interest of foreign forces a lot of because the money is very huge being invested. And uh, I'm also a marketing professional, so I can say that with a lot of confidence that this is going to create a lot of chaos. There could be events where internet has to shut down and all that commonly that happens. But this is a time, challenging time period. The consequences will be challenging the public image of India and I have an example in the next slide, which is really happening as I speak today. Uh, specifically in the West, so read all Western forces plus more XYZ are working against Indian interests. This is right hand of the current minority governments. They support all the decision making in Canada, for example. This is just an example from Canada context that I have taken because Canada is very uh, having this troublesome relationship with India as a country. This is happening in the US big time, China big time, name any, Europe big time, uh, UN big time, United Nations Security Council big time. So uh, God is sort of exposing these things but you know this is like an opposition party and this is funded by the people. All these parties are political parties run by the common people's money for instance. But they put all their energies and funding into all of this, you know, um, anti-India campaigns or uh, I will call it, uh, and they have their own political agendas. There's a, you can see what has happened with temples or Hindu temples in Canada. Uh, there were 20 known incidents and 37 which people are talking about were actually the case of kind of temples uh, that were, uh, you know, theft was done, destroyed. Uh, Obviously, there's a religious angle to it, which I don't want to talk about more than that. But, and there is an attempt, uh, um, all those guys that you see on the screen, are there's an attempt to unite them into one bucket. So I call it like divide and conquer rule, the typical British rule. Even in terms of marketing, that's like when you identify one bucket, you can brand it, appease it, whatever you want to be, and make it stand against one nation or country. But this is the situation of the opposition of the country. You imagine this is like opposition of the country within Canada and if they oppose let's the liberal government or the conservatives here in Canada that is what they are supposed to do like their job is to be opposition for the leading party not for the opposition for another party in another country which is not even Canadian so again people's money is going this way so I wanted my friends in India and also Canada to know that this is how if you fund these parties, this is how the money is being spent and this is how the campaigns are being run and this is huge like the kind of money is phenomenal which is being put in. Just an example quickly there. 17 point being there is a uh, the firm intelligence for Indian leadership and the superb, I call it superb diplomacy on international forums at the end of the day will ensure that India comes out slowly from such a trap but it will be a gradual process uh, and and it will be very challenging from the charts of it or, the, or in terms of applied astrology. Um, this time period is very good for spiritual development as well. Like I said, 
I think Ketu is in liberal as I speak, so that's like a sign of law and order. And again, in terms of, uh, and again in terms of um, politics, this is the time to for balancing of the powers, if you will. So somebody seeking spiritual advancement, uh, studies or uh, meditation, dhyan in general word, which is called mindfulness in the West, could be a very good time to do. Next section of my presentation today is about. Uh, predictions for the time period from 15 July 2023 that is made of next year to 11th Feb 2024 but more specifically the whole year next year this is the most challenging time the challenging time for economy and expenses for the country will be all time high including the national debt the country's debt uh, things that they have been borrowing paying money so my guess is it can become costly that time um, the food the groceries essentials could be becoming more and more costlier to live so expect more inflation rise of national debt from the charts of it it looks like it could be a, some impact from recession as well and that is a time period when global recession will be at least at its peak <clears throat> 20th point being the social media and other media houses will be focused on religious development law and order related reform so you can expect full-on debates all the time which anyway happens in India Leadership will deal with all such challenges by effective public communications and but will be busy dealing with foreign forces, foreign intervention and everything related to Russia, Israel, NATO, UK, US, etc. Actually, this is very confusing time for leadership with very few choices between what to do and what not to do. So leadership actually can be in back foot here where <clears throat> they will not have a choice. They can be like sort of in there can be attempts to isolate India as a country which has also happened in the past five years but this will be more profound. Karl Sarpa Yogi is anyway there in India Kundli from the birth of India in 15th August 1947 but it is becoming more prominent in that time period like 15 July 2023 onwards. Um, so all the means of productions, comfort uh, which was actually so far good up till 15th of July will be challenged including the internal wealth of the country. There can be drop in profitability. Uh, we can also expect a drop in real estate. And I'm guessing there could be possible stock market crash. Or Now this is challenging time for countries' friendships as well with Russia, US, um, any kind of relationship they may have, have had in the past. That will be tested again. Uh, there's, there's a huge, there's some possibility though that India forces, this is, <clears throat> There is a possibility of India's forces getting involved in diplomatic, sorry about the typo there, diplomatic military exercises or support to India's friends. If at all that happens, Rao will ensure India work tirelessly to win. So the positions are good in India's interest, but there are less chances of it. This is not really coming out very clearly, but I'm just trying to read it between the lines. The more profound thing is the 25th point, which is there is a direct ego clash that can be seen with respect to leadership of the country with some foreign forces including india's neighbors there in the west and india will be taking we will take such steps for safety and security of the nation um, there are chances and at least a good amount of chances that india will be taking attempts to deal with pok or pakistan occupied kashmir which is actually in the mid of all the challenges that india might be facing now it could be that joint military drill in the previous point or that exercise that i spoke about or it could be some other country but because of friendship or testing the alliance with some other country it could be i don't know g20 uh, sark or <clears throat> BRICS, whatever may be it there is a possibility of some joint exercise pok being one of them as well and again it could be same or different but looks like uh, india might get into the, that level of conflict but whatever happens no matter whatever happens uh, india is poised to win in all the foreign affairs during this time period as there is a clear Raja Yoga in the 12th house. Some of the foreign forces will also back India, but secretively, like I said, there are friends, when the testing happens, when India gets into any sort of conflict, there are possibilities that obviously they will have friends who will try to help, but it may not be out in public. It will be secret affairs. There are a lot of hidden issues, uh, again, during this time period, which will be exposed to the public. And uh, there will be a direct foreign influence in almost all matters of the country. So this is going to be a very challenging time. Again, like I said in the beginning as well, we can expect rise of national debt, expenses on arms, vehicle, um, <clears throat> sort of banking as well in some words. 
Thanks for watching. Those were my quick predictions around what 2023 could bring in in terms of astrology for India as a country. Thanks for watching. Namaste.